In this tutorial, we will learn three things. First, we will enable WSL and virtualization. Then we will download and install Docker. And finally, we will run your first container. So let's just jump into it. Let's first see what OS I am running. As you can see, I'm on Windows 11 Home, but the process is same for Windows 10. First of all, you need to go to Control Panel, and you need to go to Programs. If you are not seeing this, your view by may be in large icons mode. And if this is the case, you just need to click on Program and Features. Anyway, this thing will open, and you need to click on Turn Windows Feature On or Off. And if you can go down, just go to WSL, that is Windows Subsystem for Linux. As you can see, I've already enabled this. If it's not enabled for you, just check this and click OK. And you will see a message that will tell you to restart. It will download the required file and you'll have to restart your Windows after you do it. Now that we've enabled WSL2 and Hyper-V, we can proceed and install Docker. So let's... Just do download docker, go to the first result that is from the official docker.com. Now download docker for desktop, let it download. So now that docker desktop is downloaded, we need to open the file so that we can install it. And it will ask you if you want to allow it to change, make changes to your device, click on yes. And now the installation will start. You can add a desktop shortcut if you want, or you can just uncheck it. I'll just check it for now. So it is being installed. Let it install. Now the Docker desktop installation is complete, and it will, you will uh, see this message. You must log out of Windows to complete installation. So you can just click on close and log out. So I'll stop the recording now because uh, when I log out, the recording will be stopped anyway. Okay, I'm recording from my phone now. So I'll click on close and log out and we can log in again. And now as you can see Docker desktop is installed and available right here. So right after you have uh, signed in again, you will see this message after a few seconds. So you can just accept the service agreement. And now your Docker is installed. And this will open. You will see what will you use to what will you use Docker for. I'll just click local development. Or you can just skip it. Let me continue. And now the Docker engine is starting. Docker engine is running. Now you can see your images here, you can see your containers here, you can see your volumes and all that good stuff. Uh, you can also run a tutorial here. Okay, so let's just create your first container and let's run it and let's see what happens so we will create an apache container that will display the default apache page of docker so to run the container first you need to download the image and run it so let's search for apache now, as you can see you might be here you can click on images and you will see this apache httpd so this is the default apache image as you can see from the badge here it shows docker official image it's already been downloaded more than 1 billion times. So you can do pull or run. So if you do pull, it will just download the image and you will have to run it later manually. And if you do run, it will be downloaded and the container will be started. So for now, let's just run this. You can choose optional settings like what is the container name. Let's just set it test Apache. And you'll have to assign a port that will map to a port inside the container. So for example, when you just normally use XAMPP or some other software, you can just go localhost and the localhost page will open. For now, uh, since it can conflict with the default port of XAMPP or some other things, what we can do is we can go 8080. So localhost slash 8080 in our host machine will map to port 80 inside the Docker container. Okay. So usually you'd also have to add these paths so that we can say which volume will be mapped to which path. For example, let's go to our XAMPP folder so that that can be mapped to a container inside, to a path inside our container. Let's say our, this PHP upload folder will be mapped to slash bash slash www slash html inside the container path. Now let's run this. 
and as you can see it is already running so it has been downloaded and it is running these are the logs now you can go to terminal and you will see this is actually inside the container so these are the files now one thing is this terminal is not very friendly because you cannot if you are used to Linux you cannot do auto complete like view and tab it will actually <laughs> add some spaces so to run this container what you can do is not to run this com container to get inside this container through an actual terminal what you can do is docker execute it and then container name that is test underscore apache and then write bash so by doing this you will get inside the docker container just like you have ssh into it something like that not exactly but that's how you can work inside this and if you go inside htdocs you will see this index.html let's see what is what's inside this and you can see there is this html that's that says it works so if we go to 8080 from our local host that is this port it should be mapped to port 80 in the container and we should see that message okay so let's go to localhost slash 8080 if we just do localhost it will not run there will be an error because localhost is not running right now i mean localhost server is, or zap is not running but if we do 8080 it means that will be mapped to port 80 inside the docker so if you run this as you can see it shows it works so congratulations now you have installed docker you have run your first container go ahead and play around if you want to know more let me know in the comment section below